This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something new from Lenovo. It's a total new model. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano. So named because, well, it's 13.9 millimeters thin, and it weighs 1.99 pounds, which is 907 grams. So we've seen the X series, and there's always the smallest member of it, like the X240 and all that sort of thing. Well, they've taken it to an extreme that reminds me of some of the Vios of old. It's got a magnesium alloy chassis, so it's pretty rigid and a carbon fiber casing. It's available in our black finish and a carbon weave finish, much like we saw with the X1 Carbon, which will continue on, by the way, as a ThinkPad as well. So 16 by 10 aspect ratio display with this 13 inch display laptop. So that means that it doesn't seem quite so small at, or, you know, compared to something like the 14 inch X1 Carbon family of laptops. New Intel 11th generation CPU inside that we haven't seen before too. We're going to look at it now. Obviously, it's the Apex laptop for portability, but it's also, and so we can move around more again, great for work from home. And speaking of working from home and schooling from home, which many of us are still doing these days, a shout out to our sponsor, Trend Micro, and their home network security device. This affordable, obviously compact device is easy to administer using your Android or iOS device. And all you have to do is plug in the ethernet cable, power, and you're ready to get going. It's a firewall, it blocks malicious files and websites, and it protects the devices on your network. In fact, it can even let you know if an unknown device tries to get on your network, and if it shouldn't be there, you can block it. I find very interesting, and something I've enjoyed, is the parental controls for your kids or your grandkids, depending on your age. So you can define all the kids in the family, and you can, you can even select an age range, which is pretty handy to get going with the kind of blocking you might want to do, say teens, for example, and make sure they're not getting onto dubious websites where they shouldn't be. You can even limit things like social networking access, which these days I might want for myself just to stop me from doom scrolling. It also protects your IoT devices, your Internet of Thing devices. So that means all the smart doorbells and backs and all that sort of thing that you have on your network, too. Be sure to check out the link in the description to learn more. And now back to our video. So super light laptops with mil STD A10G testing and all that sort of thing, usually they're not so cheap, are they? Well, this time I was surprised to see that the starting price currently on Lenovo's U.S. website is $1,350. Usually these sorts of laptops are often $2,000 and up, so that's pretty refreshing here. It is a ThinkPad, so that means it is pretty darn durable, and there's not a whole lot of flex here, so that's good too. Usually with, you know, thin and light carbon fiber laptops, there's sometimes flippy, flipsy, flimsy kind of thing, you know, not so much here. The keyboard on this still feels like a ThinkPad keyboard, the smile-shaped keys and all that sort of thing, but the travel is shorter. That's the price you're going to pay. 1.35 millimeters of travel instead of the usual 1.5. That said, it feels pretty good. You will notice the shorter travel, and if you like those deep dish ThinkPad keyboards on larger ThinkPads, this probably won't float your boat so much, but the, the cushioning, the key return and spring on this means it never feels harsh and punishing on your fingertips, and it's pleasant to type on, even though I too wish it was deeper, but that's the price you're paying for that super skinny design. Also, like other super skinny laptops, some not even as skinny as this or as light, like the Dell XPS 13 or the MacBook Air and 13-inch MacBook Pro, we don't have any USB-A ports on board. We have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, so you're going to need a dongle adapter if you want to use a USB-A peripheral, and we have a headphone jack. That's it. The only other connectivity is if you want optional 4G or 5G, which is pretty exciting connectivity for WAN on this. We have Intel Wi-Fi 6 with Bluetooth 5 on board. It's Intel Evo certified, which means quick wake from sleep, long battery life, fast charging, those sorts of things for that specification. So let's talk about that CPU that's inside. This is a lower power U-series Intel 11th generation Tiger Lake CPU. So the Ultrabook CPUs are usually 15 watt. So this one's rated to go between 7 and 15 watts. It's tunable by the manufacturer, and that's called UP4 in processor lingo, lingo from Intel. So it could be bad, and it could be not so bad. Happily, it's not so bad. In fact, most of the time we saw this using about 15 watts power consumption like we would see for a standard Ultrabook CPU. So so don't get too worried about this particular model. They've tuned it more for performance. But how's heat? 
It has noise. It has a single fan and it doesn't get that noisy. And even pushing and doing benchmarks, and even though I wouldn't use this sort of machine as a daily video editing machine, doing some Adobe Premiere tests and stuff like that on it, it doesn't get loud and it doesn't get burning hot. It helps that carbon fiber isn't like metal. It doesn't really get so ouchy hot to the touch. Also, it is winter, but we are in Dallas, Texas, where it doesn't get that cold in the winter either. So in the summer, it might feel a little toastier, but so far the thermals are pretty well under control and they have a pretty beefy copper heat pipe inside that helps with that. So it's a go and the benchmark numbers on this are pretty decent. One place where they're not so impressive though, this map may have Intel Iris XE graphics, just like the standard Tiger Lake U-series CPUs that we see on most Ultrabooks, but it's clocked downward, and that number wasn't nearly as impressive. It was more comparable to Intel UHD graphics from last generation and not the, wow, cool, look at that, three times faster that we see on Iris XE on the full fat processor from Intel. So the display is 2K resolution, and there are two options, basically differing only in whether it's a matte non-touch display, which is what we have, or a touch screen. Other than that, they rate it at 450 nits. We tested it actually a little bit brighter than that, supporting Dolby Vision on board, and it's 2K resolution. Now, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so it's not going to be the number you're familiar with exactly is 2160 by 1350. So you got that a little bit of extra height that's really popular this year in laptops and that Apple's been using on MacBooks for, for a long time now. And besides being very bright, it's very color accurate too, except for the usual skewing towards the blue that you can see in the color accuracy graph. But the rest of the colors are on board and good. Contrast is above average on this and the tuning overall is nice. This is a nice looking display. When I first booted up, I was like, oh, sweet. So the touchscreen, I imagine, is going to be a bit glossy. Lenovo tries to do their magic with coatings and all this stuff to make it not look too much like a mirror, but it probably is somewhat glossy. Since it's a ThinkPad, we have the TrackPoint Eraser Stick Pointer on board, and we have the usual large glass touchpad, which behaved perfectly well in our tests. The keyboard is backlit in white, as always with ThinkPads, and you hit the FN and the space bar to control them. So back to the keyboard for a minute. They say almost full-size keyboard. So what does that mean? I mean, it is a 13-inch laptop, but with an incredibly small footprint, thanks to small bezels and all that. But uh, the keys themselves, the main keys are normal size, but they did have to whack a few things like there's no insert key. If you're in love with the insert key, you won't be in love with this laptop. But I don't think that that's something a lot of people are going to miss. Backspace, pipe, key, a little trim on that, you know. But overall, it's perfectly normal in size, the keyboard. We have a webcam privacy shutter on board, a fingerprint scanner on the keyboard deck, which uses the fingerprint on chip technology, which means that the data is stored in the chip safely, not on the SSD or Windows where somebody can try to hack into it. You get the idea. Also, the speakers on board support Dolby Atmos software and their stereo speakers, and they're a bit better than average considering the size of the laptop, which is really, well, diminutive, and Lenovo did focus on that. I think they're trying to go after the MacBook Air crowd a bit, but then considering this is like 30% lighter than a MacBook Air or 13-inch MacBook Pro, they've kind of, well, blown away the competition. I think this is in another class of specialty ultralights, isn't it? The laptop has human presence detection. This means your cat or your dog can't stand in for you, but it knows if you're in front of the laptop and it'll keep it turned on. If you walk away, it'll automatically power down the display and then lock it. And in conjunction with the Windows Hello IR camera, it can unlock it when you walk up to it. And if you don't want this feature, then you can turn it off. So how about battery life, right? Thin light laptop, did they skimp on the battery? Well, no, they did not. 48 watt hour battery, which is a perfectly normal battery size for an Ultrabook. 65 watt fast charger that can go from zero to 80% in an hour. So back when we get to go to airports and on the go and have to charge and all that sort of thing, you can get a significant charge and a short layover, that sort of thing. Battery life on this is quite good. We have the non-touch model. I don't expect the touch is gonna to use that much more power, but and they claim, you know, they always claim crazy things like 17 hours, probably if you shut off all your networking, run the screen really dim, but we run the display at 150 nits of brightness and test it real world with productivity work, uh, web browsing, a little video streaming, and just a little bit of Photoshop kind of work. And I was getting about nine to 10 hours out of this, which is excellent, especially for something this small. Since it's a ThinkPad, getting the bottom cover off is not hard. The visible Phillips head screws, you just unscrew them, and then you lift the bottom cover off. You could use a guitar pick in one corner to get started, but it's nothing hard to do. Undersides, captive screws. Here's the insides. Not a lot you can do here, though. Here's our fan, obviously, and our copper heat pipe and CPU 
heat sink right there. And Ram is soldered on board, and so is the Wi-Fi card, which is underneath this ribbon cable right here. If you did go for the optional 4G or 5G card, it would go into the socket right over here. And you might be wondering, where is the SSD, huh? Is it soldered on? Well, no, it's not. You might think so, but see this copper cover here? Unscrew two screws, and there is a little mini SSD. Yes, indeed, it's a Western Digital. It is socketed. So, yeah, you don't see like a half-height kind that often, but it does indeed come out and there's our SSD. And here we have our battery of course so that is replaceable and serviceable once you take the bottom cover off. And the speakers are along the front edge over here. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano. Not for everybody. Some of you like ThinkPads to have a lot of ports and a deep keyboard and all that sort of thing, but it has enough of the ThinkPad DNA in terms of durability and thoughtfulness in design of the keyboard. And now a really nice display on this that there's a lot going for it. Connectivity is going to be a little bit of a hurt in terms of ports to two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a headphone jack, and that's about all it. But I think the possibility of having 4G and 5G on this kind of brightens the picture as well. And after all, Lenovo does make plenty of laptops that add in the things that this one doesn't have. But this is for those of you who, after the pandemic is over, or even just carrying this thing from room to room, let me tell you, it's, it's just insane. You just want to go wee and fly around with it. It's so thin and it's so light. And the performance turns out to be good. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.